morning, Church at Chapel Hill. We're so excited to worship with you this morning, and we look forward to taking communion with you. If you are part of our church family and you've not yet sent your connection information, but you're interested in being connected during this time, you can email your name and your phone number to cachmv at gmail.com. And that way you will receive updates and reminders and prayer requests from the church at Chapel Hill. During the service today, there will be a time where you are welcome to give an offering. And there are two ways you can do that. You can give online by going to cachmv.com slash give, or you're more than welcome to mail your tithe in to P.O. Box 1101, Mount Vernon, Ohio, 43050. And as this week we're approaching Easter, Miss Kristen, our Kids Ministry Director, has some exciting things in store for you kiddos this week. If you would like to join us on our Facebook page, Miss Kristen plans to go live at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening, where she's going to share an exciting Easter Bible story. Thank you all for joining us this morning. We look forward to worshiping with you and pray that you have a blessed Palm Sunday. I could never praise him enough for the cross of Calvary. I could never thank him enough for salvation full and free. I could never do anything to deserve such perfect love. Oh, for everything he's done, I could never praise him enough. And Jesus, I just want to praise you. Oh, yes, Jesus, I just want to praise you. Jesus, I just want to praise you, oh, praise you for being so good, oh, Lord, for everything you've done, Lord, Lord, for everything you've done, oh, Lord, I praise you for everything you've done. I could never praise you enough. Good morning. It's so good to see you all. And uh, just excited to worship with you and read God's word together, take communion together. And right now we're going to take time for our offering and uh, when I'm done praying, we're going to sing together the old rugged cross. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the privilege and the opportunity to meet together in your name in most certainly unusual circumstances once again this Sunday. But Lord, we are so thankful for the privilege to be able to give. And Lord, to not just give, but to keep on being cheerful givers. And Lord, I just want to thank you again for the generosity, the faithfulness, the obedience of your people that even during difficult times, so many just continue to honor you and give back to you of all that you've given to them. So Lord, I pray that you would bless this offering. I just pray that you'd bless this service, bless the message, the preaching, Pastor Dan as he leads us in communion. And Lord, that today when, when the video ends, Lord, that we could say it was good to be together in the house of the Lord, in all of our many different houses together. Lord, we love this church family, and we just pray your blessings and favor upon this time. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning as we reflect on the price that was paid for our lives, I'm so thankful for the old rugged cross and for a Savior who gave his all for me and for you. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest. 
stand best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I Rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction to me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory. cross I will ever be true it shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory Please take your Bibles and turn to Zechariah chapter 9 and also turn to Matthew chapter 21. And let me just have a word of prayer for us. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to come before you as the body of Christ and partake together in your word. And Lord, I pray today that in a few moments as we take communion together, that you would prime and prepare our hearts, Lord, to look in the mirror today and be able to say, I still trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm not leaning on my own understanding, but in all my ways, I'm acknowledging you, dear Lord, and you will direct our paths. Give us strength and encouragement in this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we commemorate such an important day like today, which is Palm Sunday, and then we move towards Good Friday this week, and then we're going to have a great celebration next Sunday, Easter Sunday. And also in light of what we're facing in our nation with all of the chaos and the heartache and the confusion and the waiting that all of us are going through right now, I want to strive to encourage you 
and also remind you today that you were made for this. You were made for this. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, the writer says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is a prophetic, script, uh, prophetic scripture written around 520 B.C. and uh, is about the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. If you fast forward about 500 years to A.D. 30, you come to Matthew chapter 21, and we'll begin reading in verse 1. It says, now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. And you can see here in Matthew that long before the event in Palm Sunday ever took place, God in his sovereignty, he made a plan. And he set a purpose in place. And when he said it would happen back in Zechariah, just at the right moment in history, it happened right on time. And I want to remind you that God has made you and designed you and created you and given you life to live in this moment in 2020. Today, he made you for it today. Not a decade from now. Not 50 years from now. He made you to be the age you are, the person you are right now in history for his purpose and for his plans. You weren't made and born just to exist. You didn't just happen. God has a specific plan for your life. He has a use for you. In fact, he chooses to need you, as we've already read in the scripture. He has given you gifts talents. He's given you a specific personality, specific hair color, uh, specific skin color, and, and he did, designed all of this for you, for his purpose right now in this time in history. Uh, he planted you in the location you are. He gave you the family you're a part of, all for his purposes and to further his kingdom. And just as God made Noah for the flood, and Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. And God raised up a, a young lady named Esther to save the Israelite people from genocide. And God raised up a young girl named Mary to carry in her womb the Savior of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. As God raised up a guy named Paul, Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, the Apostle Paul, who became the greatest missionary to ever live. As God raised up Later down throughout history, George Washington to help establish a new nation that loved and feared God. As God raised up another man named Abraham Lincoln to abolish slavery. 
And you say, well, now, come on, you're using some, some mighty big men and women there, but I'm t- trying to encourage you today. These were ordinary people who surrendered themselves to be who God made them to be. And you were made for this. So as we celebrate Palm Sunday, let me share three ways that Jesus Christ fulfilled God's purpose. And there's, there's many more, but, but these are three simple ways that I want to encourage you with that you can follow Christ's example in this time of chaos. Because you see, during this time in history, right before Jesus comes on the scene, there was 400 years of waiting. There was 400 years of wondering, will the Messiah ever show up? Will Jesus ever arrive? Uh, also during this time, there was a madman on the throne in Jerusalem named King Herod. And he was a sick, twisted, evil king. And uh, he wanted to destroy all the firstborn young boys when he heard about Jesus in order to continue his evil, dictatorial, tyrannical reign in Jerusalem. And so just keep in mind that during this time, as our world right now is going through a time of chaos and heartache and confusion and fear and anxiety, similarly, the world in Jerusalem at that time was was a mess. And there was all kinds of darkness and sorrow and suffering. But when Jesus showed up, number one, Christ came to show God's love. Look at verse 5 in Matthew 21. It says, your king, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, that's an announcement, behold, your king is coming to you. The lover of your soul is coming to save you. He's coming to rescue you. Uh, There's an old song written, and I want to read it to you. Here are the words. It's entitled, If That Isn't Love, He Left the Splendor of Heaven knowing his destiny was the lonely hill of Golgotha there to lay down his life for me. And if that isn't love, then the ocean is dry. There's no stars in the sky and the sparrows can't fly. Oh, if that isn't love, then heaven's a myth. There's no feeling like this if that isn't love. Even in death, he remembered the thief hanging by his side when he spoke of love and compassion and he took him to paradise. And if that isn't love, then the ocean is dry. There's no stars in the sky and the sparrow can fly if that is in love then heavens are me there's no feeling like this if that is in love Christ came to show God's love. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says, so walk in love. Just as Christ so loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. And so not only did Christ bring love to Jerusalem, but Christ wants you to bring love to your community, to this city of Mount Vernon, to Community Chapel there in Bradford, to wherever you are, Christ is saying, follow my example and and show my love to a hurting world right now. Number two, Christ came to share God's peace. Look at verse five again. It says, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey. (laughs) I love David Jeremiah's commentary on this verse he said donkeys were royal mounts in the ancient near east but the fact that the messianic king is pictured riding one of these little donkeys in jerusalem rather than a war horse or a chariot signals that his ultimate purpose was to inaugurate a worldwide kingdom of peace colossians chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 says this but above all things put on love 
which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace, and let the peace of God rule. Let it reign in your hearts, to which you are also called in one body, and be thankful. I want you to look in John chapter 16, verse 33. Look what Jesus says here. These things, this word right here, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. The joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 18, is your strength. Uh, Nehemiah eight ten. be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. When Jesus came riding into town, he brought with him love. When Jesus came riding into town, he brought with him peace. And when Jesus came riding into, behold, Zion, your king, he is coming. And when Jesus came riding into town, he brought love and he brought peace. And then Jesus brought hope. And that's what I want to say next. Is Christ came to spread God's hope. Look at verse 9 again, back to Matthew chapter 21. When the people saw Jesus on that little donkey, they said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. They're waving these palm branches. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The word Hosanna was a shout of praise and adoration in recognition of the Messiahship of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem and it was a declaration of hope to a lost world. And I want to encourage you during this time when people are starting to lose hope and there's so much anxiousness and discontentment and the loss of jobs and the, the, the tension in marriages right now and, and the fear of little children and seeing their mom and dad stressed out and, and people losing their wealth and people dying and losing their health. I want to encourage you in the name of Jesus, spread his hope. Spread his hope. He, he came not just to love, not just to bring peace, but when times, when your life begins to fall apart, he is our hope. He is our hope. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says this, Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. You need to be righteous and holy right now, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Armor up so that you can go onto this battlefield and hold the sword of the Lord, the word of God, and the shield of faith, and have the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness, and the belt of truth, and the shoes of the gospel of peace, to go out there in this war and say, there is hope, there is peace, there is love, and it's available only one way, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ, who so sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense, be ready to give an answer to those, to everyone who asks you the reason for what? What are they asking for? For the hope that they see in you. So I would encourage you, show God's love, share God's peace, and spread God's hope. And then I would just give this little last word to you, and that is a reminder that God made you. God made you. You were made for this. And God made you to show and share and spread his love and his peace and his hope in this time. Go back one more time to Matthew 21, verses 2 and 3. Jesus said to his followers, he said, uh, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. And then skip down to verse six. It says, so the disciples went and they did as Jesus commanded them and they brought the donkey to Jesus. Now I wanna encourage you this morning with this thought. If God 
says in his word that his eye is on the sparrow. And he said, look, if my eye and my loving care uh, is on a little bird, and he said, are you not more valuable than a bird? And God says, if, if, my, if my eye is, is on a little donkey, a little adolescent young donkey, and, and, and I care about that donkey, are you not more uh, worth more than a donkey? Uh, God says you are. But if he can take a little bird and, and have a purpose for it, and God can take a, a small donkey and use it to carry in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, if God can take a stubborn donkey, then God can take a stubborn person like you and a stubborn person like me and fashion us and form us to show his love and share his peace and spread his hope. You were made for this, church family. I read an article this week for the first time in 35 years. I've never seen it before, never heard about it. But on April 1st, 1985, Sports Illustrated published a story in their magazine by George Plimpton entitled The Curious Case of Sid Finch. Hayden Sid Finch was an eccentric, elusive drifter who became a rookie baseball pitcher with the New York Mets in the mid-80s. Besides the odd fact that he wore only one shoe, a hiker's boot, when pitching, what was most astonishing about Finch was that he could pitch a fastball at an amazing 168 miles per hour with pinpoint accuracy, <laughs> obliterating the past previous record of a mere 104 miles per hour. Sid grew up in an English orphanage and was adopted by an archaeologist who later died in a plane crash in Nepal. After briefly attending Harvard University, he went to Tibet to pursue potentially becoming a monk. While there, he learned yoga and the mastery of the mind, which he claimed was the source of his pitching prowess. His oddities including haul, included hauling around a small prayer rug made of yak fur, playing a French horn, and carrying a shepherd-like staff and a knapsack. <laughs> the article in Sports Illustrated was full of pictures of Sid Finch, and it had in there interviews with Harvard roommates, uh, baseball players like Lenny Dykstra on the New York Mets, Major League Baseball scouts and coaches, and even his landlady was interviewed and pictured where he rented a room. The story blew up the sports world and set New York Mets fans on fire with excitement. But not, but not long after the story was published, the truth came out. <laughs> George Plimpton had pulled off one of the greatest sports, uh, sports hoaxes in history on April Fool's Day. The story was indeed a joke and a farce. <laughs> What's incredible, though, is that when the story broke, the public, sports journalists, Major League Baseball managers and players, and even the commissioner of Major League Baseball, they all bought it. They all believed the story, but it wasn't true. It was made up. It just blew me away to read that. But you know, I was thinking about that story this week when I saw it, and I thought that is a good example of many people today, especially in times like this, many people feel a little bit like maybe they are Sid Finch. Uh, they question the validity, the purpose, and the point of their life. Well, why am I here? What's, what, what can I do during this time? How can I help? How can I make a difference? They don't know what to believe or who to believe, what is real and what is a lie, what is truth and what's just a joke. And fear and depression and discontentment can ravage the heart and the mind and the body during chaotic times like we find ourselves in today. If you are unaware or uncertain or unsure or unbelieving, about who made you and why he made you. But I tell you on the authority of the word of God that you were made for this. You were made for a purpose. 
Uh, you're not a hoax. You're not a joke. You're not an accident. God, creator of heaven and earth, he made you. God loves you. He has a great plan and purpose for your life. You say, I'm just so ordinary. That's who he uses. He uses ordinary people who say, Lord, I'm all in. And he can move through you to help change your life and your family and your community in this time. And if you will surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, you say, you know, you've been talking about God's love and God's peace and God's hope. I don't know what the, any of that's like because I don't know God. But the Bible says in the book of Romans that if you will believe in the Lord, Jesus Christ with all your heart, the Bible says that if you will confess your sins and repent and that you will believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and was buried and rose again, the Bible says you will be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And then as you get into scripture and you begin to fellowship with the family of God, you begin to grow and you begin to learn what it's like to live a life of purpose and fulfillment and joy and peace and hope and, and, and happiness that is only produced by a man named Jesus. So I would encourage you during this time, remember you were made for this. We're gonna get through this because God is seated upon the throne and through his son, we can show his love. Through Jesus Christ, we can share his peace and through Jesus Christ, we can spread his hope. Father, we are so thankful. We are so thankful that in you, as we've already read, we have peace. In this world, we will have tribulation, but we can be of good cheer. We can be of good confidence, calm, and comfort, and courage, and confidence we can have because we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Strengthen our hearts, O oh Lord, to obey you and trust you and share you with this needy world. In Jesus' name we pray. I love for her Lord Recklessly poured out Valuable lessons Disregarding the scorn And once it was broken And spilled out Fragrance filled all the room Like a prisoner released from his shackles Like a spirit set free from the tomb Broken and spilled out just for love of you, Jesus, my own precious treasure, lavished on thee. Let me be spilled out 
and used up for thee. Whatever it takes to be yours, Lord. Whatever it takes to be clean I just can't live without your sweet approval no matter what it may mean I throw myself at your feet Lord broken by your love for me may the fragrance of total commitment be the only defense that I need Lord you are God's precious treasure His love and His own perfect Son Sent here to show me the love of the Father Yes, just for love it was done Though you were perfect and holy You gave up yourself willingly You spared no expense for my pardon You were used up and wasted This is always a special time in our church whenever we set aside a time to do communion. We don't do communion every week. In fact, we have tried to make sure that when we do communion that we basically set aside a whole service so that we can spend time thinking about what Christ has done. Praising God for what he's done and uh, rejoicing in a wonderful savior that was willing to lay down his life 
that we might have the hope of life. And so today we are, are going to take the Lord's Supper in a way we've, we've never taken it before. And uh, one of the things that the church kind of kids me about is over the years, I'd look, look around the church and uh, I'd look over on the right side and look in the middle and look on, at, uh, on the left side. And then I'd say, now folks, you need to understand we will never be assembled like this again. And uh, especially Alan Culberson, sit right over here on my left side. He'd joke and make fun of me and meet me at the back and say, we'll never be assembled like this again. But uh, truly, uh, every service is a different service with a, a, a different group of people. And every Sunday, I said, we're writing a chapter in our church history uh, that will never be repeated. Surely today we understand that we're doing communion like we have never done communion before. Some of you maybe, as I'm trying to picture, some of you may be seated in your living room right now. Some of you may be standing in the kitchen, uh, wherever. I hope that you'll take time to, to get into a place with your family where you can kind of isolate yourself and focus in on these moments uh, of, what, of us taking communion together as a church body. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the apostle Paul wrote this scripture for us uh, regarding the Lord's Supper. And he said in verse 27 of chapter 7, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the body of the Lord. The truth is that none of us are worthy of the blood and body of Christ. But it says that we need to have a proper consideration of what Christ has done for us. And so I trust that you will take a moment and think about what Christ has done in providing for us a plan of salvation and that he gave his body. And, and if there's something you need to clear up, maybe... Maybe a husband and wife, you're sitting there and you're all crossways in your relationship. Maybe you need to take a second and say, you know, dear, I'm sorry. And uh, make sure everything's clear. And uh, then that you're in a proper perspective and a proper mindset to think about what Christ has done. And so Paul said, uh, he, he said, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. So at this time, if you will take your little emblem that's representing the body of Christ, this little emblem representing the broken body of Christ. And uh, we are going to take this little emblem together. And so uh, I'm going to pray and thank God for his broken body. Thank you, Lord, for being willing to hang on a cross, to give your all, to lay down your body that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We rejoice today in a risen Savior who gave his body that we might have life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let us eat the wafer together. In verse 24, it says, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us drink the cup together. We almost always have some testimonies. We take a live mic and pass it around and, and people say, oh, I'm thankful for the, the broken body or I'm thankful for the blood of Christ. And um, maybe it would be wonderful if in your home, dads, some of you would look at your little kids and say, I want to thank you for what Jesus has done for me. I'm a different man. Wives, some of you give your testimony. And then probably the, well, the most pleasant thing and uplifting would be to let the children give their thanks for what Christ has done. In closing, I want to share this thought. Uh, I was thinking about all that Christ did. And rather than trying to tie all this together, I thought of a scripture that said, or a, a song that was written that that kind of capsulizes this whole idea. The song said, I should have been crucified. I should have, I should have hung on the cross in disgrace, but Jesus, God's son, took my place. I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on the cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's son, took my place. And so because of that, we live, we live, and we're looking toward Easter. We're gonna close with a doxology and uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. family, we love you. Look forward to seeing you on Easter Sunday. You're dismissed.